Welcome back into 626 here on your Thursday morning. There's truly nothing like seeing the glimmer in a child's eye when they're talking about Christmas. The excitement, the anticipation, you kind of just wish you could bottle it and keep it forever. And this morning, our friend Todd Cole is here to help that holiday spirit grow a little bit for all the little ones out there. Good morning, my friend. I wish I had the energy you have. <laughs> You know? yeah. It's called coffee. Yeah, Tim yes. Hortons. Right. They, they right. sell right. it at Sam's Club. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so is there something magical? Is there for kids especially yeah. and, and parents too? Is yeah. there something magical and about this really season? really is, and I encourage everyone to purchase at least one book for mm -hmm. their child for the holiday, whether it be Kwanzaa, Christmas, Hanukkah, because it is a gift you can open again and again and of again. Of course, yeah. And how powerful are these holiday stories? Because it, it seems like there's more meaning typically right. behind a lot of the holiday stories. Exactly, and all of these are off the beaten path, so to speak. They aren't the Grinch, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, even the Polar Express. These are some you might be unfamiliar with that mm -hmm. you might want to purchase. The first one, uh, Santa's Book of Names, by one of my favorite authors and illustrators who's been writing for decades, 83 years old and still publishing. But it's a story about a first grader named Edward who learns how to read on Christmas Eve. So double the message, you know, with mm -hmm. Christmas and Santa, but learning how to read as well. The message of the birds, I just read this at a Christmas party at the Avalon last night mm -hmm. to adults. So we know that children's books are for everybody. Yeah. And this is a story about learning to listen and be quiet and appreciate silence because we've gotten so busy that we've forgotten the true meaning of Christmas. And so the birds are questioning, why aren't we listening anymore? And so the owl suggests that the birds go to the children and let the children relay the message for all the parents to hear. And the very last page just wishes everyone peace on earth. I like it. And so it's, it's always the wise story. owl, isn't it? Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. All right, what's your next one? Uh, the history of Jingle Bells. Mm -hmm. And it's a true story of how it happened in Savannah, Georgia, right after um, the Civil War. But there was still some hardship between the whites and the blacks. Even though slavery was over, uh, there was a church that was welcoming all colors into their church. But some of the whites in Savannah, Georgia, Georgia did not appreciate that. And they were throwing bricks through the glass windows. And it made the children of that church feel very unsafe. And because of that, the choir director penned jingle bells. And it took them away to a place where there was snow. And Savannah, Georgia never had snow. Mm -hmm. And so it helped them have a sense of calm, a comfort zone, so when they sang the song, they felt good about being in the church with all different colors and experiencing um, a comfort zone, Jingle Bells, the history of Jingle Bells. What an amazing story. The Little Red Sleigh, and this is about a little red sleigh who just has been told over and over again, you're too small, you're not strong enough, and he wants to be able to carry the, the gifts for Santa on Christmas Eve, and it's through persistence and never giving up that his dream does come true. Mm -hmm. Next up. Uh, f uh, orange for Frankie. Mm -hmm. Do you have traditions in your family at Christmas time? Uh, with orange, there's always an orange in the bottom of uh, the the uh, stocking. Really? Oh, ever since oh, I was a kid, yes. Great, great, yeah. Well, that's the story of this. Patricia Polacco penned this, and it's a true story of how they always had an orange in their stocking mm -hmm. as she was growing up, and her dad had to go and get all the oranges on Christmas Eve during a snowstorm. Will he return in time to be able to put <laughs> <laughs> their favorite tradition into their stocking, and of course he does. Mm -hmm. And then one last one here on the end before Santa's we go. Santa's Prayer, mm -hmm. and it's a story about two siblings who watch Santa go into a church and kneel at the altar and stop, start praying for things that are uh, non-materialistic. And they overhear everything that he prays for, and when he leaves, they feel compelled to go and st sit at the altar too and start praying for things that really matter. That's amazing. And you have more on your YouTube channel, right? Yes. If you we find you. Uh, just go to Todd, Titan Todd Cole on YouTube and you'll find 25 Christmas and holiday books that you might want to buy. Awesome. We love it. Well, great to see you, my friend. Happy holidays. Thanks again and for coming in. Great to see you. you All right, let's send things back over to Emily Frazzini. Doesn't feel super Christmassy out there weather-wise yet. Feels more like, I don't even know, just Gross. It feels yeah, gross, Steve. Great. And thank you to Todd, too. I got my first baby books today. He gave me this beautiful collection. So I'm so excited to read those to baby one day. All right, let's jump into our forecast.